when I was four and a half, four to four and a half, right in there, I, I had a, a, a near-death experience. I was going to a cross-country with my mom, with some cousins and my brother and sister in the, in the car and stuff, and I didn't get much um, liquid, so I dehydrated, and I ended up in the hospital, and I was, my mom told me that I died. And I went, huh? I was about 12 years old. <laughs> and she said, oh, yeah. She says, your eyes roll back in your head and everything. And, and I said, really? <laughs> you know, she didn't tell me. And I started remembering things. I told her when I first woke up at, you know, when they brought me back and stuff. Um, I told my mother what I'd seen. I tried to tell her that I'd, I'd seen this thing, you know, and I, <laughs> I was describing it. I said, Mom, all of a sudden I was like up in the sky, I think. Yeah, I wasn't like anywhere like uh, like heaven or anything. I was just up in the sky in this kind of a, a beautiful area, but I had a light coming from the left side, and I was like in the spirit. So I'm I felt like I was laying down with my head turned up, looking at this being, and it had a long white robe on, and a blue sash, and um, I mean of course I'm in awe. But I wasn't scared. I guess the spirit is the intellect of the of the soul, so there's no real no fear. There's no weird emotions or anything. But um, I remember looking at that, and the face was all, you know, like when they they take the face off in a show because they don't want their face to be seen. That's what it looked like. It was going all over the place, and um, I couldn't see who it was, but I could see that that robe and and the, the blue sash, and it had a, a splash of red, which I assumed was blood, but it was, he was facing me, so it was more to his left side, but in the middle of the pecs, that, that, in the chest area. And I, for years, I could never figure out what that was. It just baffled me. What was that, you know? And what was I looking at? Was that Jesus, you know? And I go, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. And you know, why would you? I was only four. Why would Jesus hide his face from me? You know, it was supposed to be only the pure of heart, see God and stuff. Why would he hide his face from me? Was I that wicked? You know, <laughs> anyway, um, I tried to tell my mom and, and she, my mom always talked about everything. She wanted to hear it. She was a wonderful mom. And when I got done telling her, she goes, oh, that's amazing. And she turned and turned tail and wa- walked out really quick. I thought, you're kidding me. I just told you I saw this stuff, and it's really kind of crazy looking and stuff. And she just walks out. So I didn't know what to think of that, except that I thought maybe it was something you're not supposed to talk about. So I never really said anything for a long time. And I thought about it my entire life, on and off, on and off, on and off. But I finally got my answers later on when God touched me and healed my heart and healed my, my mind. And I could understand things. I could read the Bible for the first time in my life and understand it. So when I was there looking at at this being, I was looking at him. And all of a sudden, whoosh, I was right next to him, you know, facing the same way he was facing. And all of a sudden I found this, what I called 40 years ago, a download. I just got this, you know, it just kept going into my mind, my spirit, I guess. And, um, I, I, I couldn't catch anything. I, I was getting frantic as a little kid. And I'm going, I can't, I was thinking it. I can't remember. I'll never remember. And the one thing I did catch on to, and he said at that time when I said, I, you know, I felt that I couldn't remember. He said, you'll remember when you need it. And then also it was, um, I was going to tell you about, oh, the one thing I caught on to was that, I was told I was going to have a a daughter and she was going to be beautiful. But most of all, she was going to be extremely intelligent. And I don't remember the words anymore, just the interpretation of what I was told. And um, so my whole life, I was looking for the right man to get married to, to have this beautiful daughter. It meant everything in the world to me. And I went from one to the next and they were all not good men. And I never had a child. And I finally found one and I had a child. And then it turned out it didn't work out so good, you know? So that was the first one I had. The next NDE I had, I was pushing 50. And I was deathly ill from the time I was 37 
till the time I, you know, I died in the hospital. I was in the hospital. But I'd always had this problem with being very, you know, extremely exhausted, chronic fatigue. Now I know what it is. You know, lots of pain, just tons of pain, unbe- unbearable pain. But I couldn't tell anybody, you know, because my mom was really sick. And my dad was always gone. And my brother and sister were barely hanging on. They were a little bit older than me, you know. So this next NDE I had, I was in the hospital. They took me off 14 different hardcore drugs that the medical association put, you know, served up and because uh, I couldn't go to the bathroom. So they just took me off everything. They didn't do it in a sane way or anything. They just, it was mean, really mean, actually. And I uh, died, <laughs> okay? Short, I mean, quick, I died. And I remember being, it sounds strange, but it was almost like I was being lowered down. Maybe somebody, like an angel had me in their hand or it was the Holy Spirit, or I felt like I was on a, a ship hook, you know, <laughs> one of those, you know, what do you call it, to put down in the sea. Anyway, so um, I felt like I was being lowered down, and it, I was being lowered down into a cavernous place that I could see um, swirling black stuff, like an ooze. It was oozy, and it was swirling all over, and I could see flames. Um, I was in one cavern, and the next cavern over, I could see flames all over the place that looked like people were dancing, you know, their hands up in the air and they're doing this. I figured it out. They, they weren't dancing. They were screaming. They were in agony. That freaked me out. So, um, but I was never in danger. I was just wondering what is going on. And he, this, this being lowered me down three times. And each time I'd try to look somewhere else. I'd look all over the place and try to figure out what, the, what is this? You know, where am I? And um, I, I didn't get it at the time. I was just, I think I was just so engulfed with all this stuff. Everything was happening. And I just remember the black oozy stuff and then also the, the flames. And the cavern I was looking for didn't have a bunch of flames. It was, it's just this oozy crap all over, all over down there. It looked like it was swirling, you know. And I, I, the only thing I can think of is it had to be some kind of, you know, this like, uh, what's it called? Diesel fuel, the kind of things they pull out of the ground, petrol and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, I think it's coming out of hell, honest to God. <laughs> so um, what I saw when I woke up, I didn't say anything. There was a, a little, what do you call them? The girls that wear the pink stripes and stuff, but only she didn't have that on. She was the only one that came when I died. She's the only one that was there. And she bent over me, and I guess she was trying to, you know, push on my chest or something. She didn't know what to do. And I grabbed her hand real quick, and it scared the crap out of her. She goes, you were dead. I, you were dead. There was no air coming out of you. There was nothing. You were dead. And I just said, well, okay. Oh. I didn't know. I was really hurting, a lot of pain and stuff. And uh, it took me a long time to figure that one out, too. I mean, I, I figured that God was showing me what hell was like. And I, I came off of... 14, um, there was 12 80 milligram Oxycontin that the medical people had put me on. And, and there was 13 other drugs that were hardcore, serious stuff. And I knew I was going to die. And I thought when I got through this whole thing of, you know, getting, getting over this, um, in, in the hospital, I thought, you know, I'm good now because I'm only, I'm only taking seven of the 80 milligram Oxycon. That's hillbilly heroin. Nobody told me what that really was. And it burns up all the receptors in your head and no way you can get off that stuff. I went on to something else, Suboxone. And then I still can't get off of that. And the doctor explained, one nice doctor said, yes, that stuff burn up all the nerve endings and all the uh, receptors in your brain. And now your body can't live without it. And it, I tried a couple of times. I ended up in the hospital twice. And I had seizures. I had four, four or five strokes. I've had five seizures in my life. I've had all kinds of terrible things happening. Um, just awful things. And it's because I believe I had a gifting on my life to teach. And I was never... Everything around me was working against me, holding me down. I, I fought and fought and fought until I got so sick. I couldn't fight. I couldn't do anything. I lost my daughter. I lost everything in my life that ever meant anything to me. And 
I'm thankful to God, though, because adversity brings you closer to God. And I'm so close to God right now, and I'm so thankful we're here at the end. What date is this right now? It's um, August 7th, 2021, and Jesus is supposed to be coming for his church, the real church, not the ones in the building. There's some there maybe, but he's coming for the remnant, the small portion of the whole that is that they're true believers. I'm a remnant. Are you a remnant? If you are, prepare yourself. Jesus is coming and he's coming very quickly, faster than people realize. So get ready. And God bless all of you. Bye.